So uh, let's talk a little bit about how to create a Lelentrov.js uh, app uh, which can access uh, SharePoint online. Uh, first of all, let me uh, set a little bit the context. So when we talk about Electron.js, what do we mean? What is Electron.js? Well, Electron.js uh, is an open source library uh, developed by uh, GitHub. So actually, now we can say developed by Microsoft, <laughs> but <laughs> that's just a side note. And uh, it's built uh, uh, on top of Chromium and Node.js. And you can use it to create uh, HTML and JavaScript-based applications, uh, which can be executed on desktop platforms like uh, uh, Mac OS, uh, Windows, and Linux. So it is really powerful powerful and useful whenever you need to create uh, uh, cross-platform desktop solutions and whenever you want to reuse your knowledge uh, as long as you know how to create uh, an HTML and JavaScript application. Uh, moreover, it's pretty easy to use Electron.js to release applications that can be easily deployed on the target environment of the end users as well as easily updated whenever you have uh, an updated version of your uh, desktop app uh, that you want to release. From a, a tool chain perspective, uh, developing Electron.js applications can be done uh, this is just one set of options, but can be done using uh, Visual Studio Code and TypeScript language, as well as using uh, React or Angular or the framework of your choice. Personally, being uh, an SPFX developer, a SharePoint framework developer, I like to use uh, TypeScript and React uh, within Visual Studio Code uh, to build uh, Electron.js solutions. And maybe you're wondering uh, if there are any real applications built uh, with Electron.js. And well, the answer is uh, pretty easy. There are about uh, a little bit more than 600 applications built with Electron nowadays. And uh, in uh, the list of those applications, we can, which can find uh, Visual Studio Code, <laughs> just to make an example, or Microsoft Teams, the desktop app of Microsoft Teams, as well as the Slack desktop client. So there are plenty of real uh, business applications built uh, using Electron. And that's why, personally, I'm uh, using and I started using uh, Electron for such kind of desktop applications for my customers. However, uh, being the fact that I am a SharePoint guy, uh, usually when I develop solutions, I need to uh, consume to use content which is stored in SharePoint, most likely SharePoint Online, as the repository for my data. And uh, having the capability to create a desktop solution which can uh, be uh, multi-platform, cross-platform, and can easily consume data in SharePoint Online, I think uh, it's a very good uh, uh, opportunity and it's a real challenge for uh, building a real business level solutions. Moreover, as I said, if you are a SharePoint framework developer, and most likely you are because you are attending this uh, uh, call, as a SharePoint framework developer, you will be able to reuse most of the knowledge that you have and that you uh, uh, put uh, uh, in place when you create SharePoint Thermal Solution, also when you create Electron.js solutions. However, if you want to consume SharePoint Online, as usual, and luckily, we have to face some security and authorization and authentication challenges, because in order to access the content that we have in SharePoint Online, of course, we need to authenticate and to have proper authorization in order to get the content out from uh, SharePoint. Uh, we uh, most likely, uh, we all know that under the cover of Office 365, we have Azure Active Directory. Azure Active Directory supports uh, Open Authorization 2.0. And the way to go to have access, to have a secure access to SharePoint Online through an electronic application is to leverage the Open Authorization Protocol offered by Azure Active Directory. Uh, so now I will show you a, a solution, which is a real solution, which we uh, developed for uh, one of our customers. And uh, that's why I will start from the customer requirements. The customer uh, wanted and wants to have a solution, which is a kind of an application launcher, a desktop application launcher, cross-platform, uh, of course. And they want to use this application to start uh, all of the tools, uh, all of the apps that they use uh, on their desktop environment. But they want to have uh, a unique repository for the whole list of apps that they want to launch through the app launcher. They want to have uh, 
authorization based on their Active Directory and uh, on their Azure Active Directory. This customer has a federation in place, so they have an Azure Active Directory on-prem and they are federated with uh, Azure AD. And they wanted to use exactly the same user account and the single sign-on experience provided by the federation while accessing the app launcher, still having uh, uh, authorization filters so that every single user will be able to see uh, just and only the applications that he is allowed to launch and to see in the app launcher. And moreover, or last but not least, the customer uh, also uh, said that from a requirements perspective, they wanted to have a nice and modern UI for their app launcher and not th something really uh, uh, old school uh, with the classic uh, uh, Windows form uh, UI or something like that. So the proposed solution that we created and that I will show you uh, in a matter of few uh, seconds from now is a solution that stores the uh, uh, app launcher items in a SharePoint online list so that by using a, a collection of items in a list, we can use the SharePoint authorization rules and the access control lists of SharePoint to filter items based on the currently connected user. Moreover, using SharePoint Online and Azure AD, we can make it possible for the end users to have a smooth experience because they will leverage the single sign-on that they have through ADFS and through the federation that they have in place. Moreover, we decided to use Electron.js, of course, uh, and we uh, are using Electron.js because uh, through uh, Electron we have a cross-platform support, and uh, we decided to use React to build the UI component that we use to render the app launcher. And again, last but not least, we are using the Open Authorization 2.0 endpoints of Azure Active Directory to, um, to create the uh, authorization and authentication flow uh, within the Electron.js application. So that said, now that you have uh, the context, and actually I don't know how many of you already know and use Electron.js, most likely you know, but not necessarily you use it, uh, that's why I decided to have a, a small uh, context before moving to the demo, but now I will move to the demo environment and I will show you uh, the solution in practice as well as uh, uh, some code excerpts of these solutions. Uh, just for the sake of completeness, this is the uh, URL for Electron GS project if you want to uh, dig into it. And, uh, this is uh, the SharePoint online site. The customer is based in Italy, as like as I am, so sorry for the UI in Italian language, but most likely you can, you can get what is uh, the meaning of uh, all the items you see. And here we have a list of uh, uh, items that we want to launch using the app launcher. We have a title, we have a description, an icon, uh, stuff like that. Uh, so uh, on the other side, we have uh, a Visual Studio Code project for our Electron.js solution. Let me first of all start the project so that you will be able to see uh, the uh, UI of the application first and then the uh, code under the cover. So let me start it. And as you can see, I have the sign-in UI. I'm not a user with a federated account because I'm outside of their uh, domain, so I have to do an explicit authentication. But still, I can authenticate using Azure Active Directory. I will use my credentials in the uh, customer tenant. They have ADFS, as you can see, so I have to provide my credentials to their ADFS uh, uh, authentication front end, and I have to wait for the two-factor authentication uh, um, code, which hopefully will come in a matter of few seconds. Okay, got it. So for two, for six, for two again. Luckily, it is a one-time password. So now I am in. I will not save uh, my uh, user access token because I want to use different uh, credentials needed. And as you can see, this application now provides with a UI which, can, which you can like or not, it's up to you, but <laughs> it's not the real topic of this uh, demo. Here we can see a, a bunch of groups of icons. Actually, in my account, I have all of them, but a real user will just see uh, a small amount of icons. And they can start the application by clicking on them and launching uh, the apps uh, that are running under the cover of every single icon that we have in the app launcher. But I don't really care about the application by itself, and I want to move to the source 
source code. Just for the sake of completeness, here we have the developer toolbar because I am in the developer context, and you can see, you can uh, appreciate the fact that under the cover there is a real HTML application which is running inside the uh, Chromium uh, platform in the Electron JS uh, solution. So let me close this application, and this is the source code of the Electron JS app. Well, uh, I will not dig into all of the details of the Electron JS app because this is not a demo about how to build uh, an Electron uh, solution from scratch. But just for the sake of uh, uh, clarity, I have an index.html page which I load in a JavaScript file, and this index.html page uh, is made up of the HTML code which will render the UI that we just saw, and there is a div which I will use to replace it with a custom React component which I have in this app.tsx file, and this custom React component, as you can see, is like as you are used to doing uh, when you develop SharePoint Framework Solutions, for example, has its own properties, its own state, and all the other stuff that, as a React component, uh, uh, you maybe are used to seeing and I render the component inside the div element that I have in the HTML that we just saw. Moreover, in this React component, when the component uh, uh, got mounted, I simply make a request using the inter-process communication of uh, Electron.js to make uh, an Azure Active Directory login. This AD login request will go to a uh, Interprocess main uh, event handler called a, the a, uh, login as like as the one we were using uh, uh, in the uh, React component, and here we simply use the implicit flow of open authorization inside this application to make uh, the authentication flow uh, in the application. So we use login microsoftonline.com, we use the open authorization endpoint, uh, we con uh, connect to the authorized endpoint, we provide a bunch of settings for the application, including the client ID, including the resource that we want to access, which is SharePoint Online, and you can clearly see it in the settings of the application. In the collection of resources, we have the Microsoft as well as the SharePoint Online resource that we want to consume. Once we have the URL for an implicit flow request, we simply create a browser window within the context of Electron, we render that window on the screen, and we wait for the window to uh, get a redirect to the redirect URL that we provided during the um, uh, authentication flow. And once we have done that, we can get back from the query string of the response, the access token that we can use to connect to SharePoint Online. And in fact, we store the access token in a global variable that we have, so that later on we can say, okay, still using the inter-process communication, call the SPO refresh data action. And again, we have another event on this side, which will be fired, and we will make an HTTP request for the URL of SharePoint Online, for the uh, REST APIs of SharePoint Online to get the specific list that we have in target and the items in that list. And as we are used to doing, uh, whenever you use the REST API of SharePoint Online, we make a GET request for the items. We provide the authorization header of type bearer with the access token, and we accept a JSON response, so that we will get back the collection of items to render using an access token which will include the context of the currently connected user, and so the response will be filtered based on the currently connected user, and we can just uh, return the collection of items which will be rendered in the React component in the uh, UI of the application. In order to be able to do that, of course, uh, we had to register the application in Azure Active Directory. And in fact, we have that launcher application registered in the EAD tenant of our customer, and in the manifest file of this AAD application, we enable the implicit flow, as you can see here, of to allow implicit flow equal true, as well as, of course, in order to being able to access SharePoint Online in the required permissions, we had to declare that we wanted to access, at least in uh, read-only mode, uh, the content of the site collections uh, with a delegated uh, permission request. So, pretty straightforward, you create an Electron.js application, you leverage at the uh, low level, I would say, the um, OAuth implicit, implicit flow, as well as 
the REST APIs of SharePoint Online, providing the access token, and that's it. You can interact, you can communicate with SharePoint Online from uh, a desktop application built with Electron.js. And that's it on my side as well, so we have a few minutes, three, four minutes for Q&A if uh, needed. Thanks, Paolo. Uh, so, looking at the chat window, Paolo, there's one question from Russell, and he's asking, like, when you saw the screen with all the, the, the tiles where you can launch applications, the applications that you launch, are they all web applications, or can the tool also launch an application which is locally installed on the machine? Uh, can be application which are locally running on the machine uh, because uh, actually you can do that when you run the desktop application uh, and uh, we have uh, an IPC function that we use to do that. So, for example, you can launch another desktop app uh, running on the machine. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. So there's kind of a connection to, to the actual host running the generic mm -hmm. Electron app. Yeah, if you think about that, when you are in Visual Studio Code or when you are in Teams or in Slack, you can do the same. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah indeed, indeed. Just looking at the other questions. It doesn't run on iOS. I think there was a discussion there. Uh, like, no, uh, Mac, or, Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. Uh, the IPC main class comes from uh, Electron.js, so if you dig into the documentation of uh, Electron.js, uh, you will find uh, that the IPC main uh, is provided through uh, the uh, uh, out-of-the-box infrastructure, the inter-process communication is provided by the out-of-the-box infrastructure of uh, um, Electron.js. Mm -hmm.